Welcome back to The Stars Made Me Do It. We have an exciting return guest kind of collaborator <laughs> awesome person. We have Kaylin from Hi. Uh, her awesome podcast, A Crime Story Podcast. And if you listened to our last episode, The Stars Made Me Murder, um, we collaborated and heard about some really terrible people, and everybody seemed to like it, so we're going to do it again. <laughs> so this thanks. time we're doing Lady Killers. Yeah, Lady Killers. So thanks for coming back, Kayla. I like that we now have like our own like spin-off series. I know, I podcast. love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, because like, all of the famous true crime podcasts, they do something else with it um so i think it's kind of cool to do my interest plus like an interest i don't really know a whole lot about yeah and analyze it that way i think it makes it not as awful <laughs> yeah <laughs> it puts a nice spin on it yeah <laughs> yeah horrible stories and we also my- have like your research we're like very like methodical with our like what what <laughs> like <in the laughs> yes background. Exactly, exactly. So it's we fun need for someone me. to keep us grounded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm a very practical person, which is like I feel like doing a podcast like this would be like, oh my god, terrifying for me. That's why I like my scripts. Yeah. But this is really fun <laughs> for me. So maybe I should do a podcast like this. So <laughs> well, that's why we have our y'all. collaborations. Yeah. yeah. No, and we're like, oh she's prepared. Oh good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> no, I can't good, come into anything unprepared, but... <laughs> a good combo team, for sure. Well, exactly. we're really excited to do another episode. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be talking about lady killers, and Kaylin's going to give us um, some more terrible stories, and then Tara and I are going to tell you all about their uh, their star signs and what it is that made them murder. Well, speculative. Spe- yeah, you know what? I love the I love the name The Stars Made Me Murder, but it's the stars don't make you murder. Yeah. You can't blame the fact that you murdered someone on, you no. know, oh well my my Mercury is in Gemini and that's what did it. No. It's like <laughs> it's like the, the memes where it's like, you know, it's because I'm a Scorpio. No, it's because you're a bitch, Karen. You yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the stars don't make you murder, but it is a fun name. It's a fun title. <laughs> it is fun. I think it tells everyone what they need to know exactly <laughs> yes yes speaking and of telling people what they need to know yes before we start um little disclaimer don't listen to this if you don't want to hear some gruesome crimes it's gonna get dark it's gonna get I murdery yeah and um so you know if, i don't i don't know if we have any kid listeners or whatever but probably not for children definitely not for children if you're a I- child listening to this i'm I'm kind of intrigued. One of my mom told me that her <laughs> fifth grade students was listening to my podcast. Oh my god! Ooh. And I was just like, I talk about like child murder and sex um. crimes. Like, I don't know. But at the same time, when I was eight years old, I would hide watching Snapped from my parents. So, and I turned out <laughs> okay, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> who knows? Uh, well. Yeah, I mean, Unsolved Mysteries, I know it doesn't go as deep oh, as, yeah. but that was everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Anyways, um, so yes, general warning, if you are a child or a someone who does not enjoy squeamish things, some dark themes, just wait till next week. Skip this episode, we'll see you next week. Yep. Or we'll, you'll hear us next week. <laughs> and if you like dark, gruesome things, tell all your friends. There we go. Yes. <laughs> and come to my and listen to an episode of my podcast. Yeah. Yes. Go hop on over to a crime story pod for the the real dark. Um, but sometimes not so dark. Sometimes really fun and like you know the whole. Because my favorite kinds of crimes are murder <laughs> and <laughs> art theft. So I yeah. really like oh. doing art theft crimes. And actually, my next episode will be over an art theft, which I think it's more fun. It's lighter. And it's, mm-hmm. I don't know, I just really enjoy it. It's almost it. like an adventure in a way, as yes! opposed to, like, a gruesome, terrible act, yeah. Exactly. And just because we brought it up last episode, I am, in fact, crocheting during this episode. <laughs> Hashtag crochet crimes. So one <laughs> day, <laughs> when the three of us are together, we'll have to make some sort of video about Kaylin telling us true crime stories. While we're all crocheting. <laughs> While we're all crocheting. <laughs> We should, like, make a crime blanket or something oh while we're crocheting. Oh. We could do a video <laughs> Star podcast. Star embroidery. 
<laughs> yes. With blood. Oh, my God. I, I see it in my head, and I love it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, whenever we're all in the same continent and state, and yeah, it'll happen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Anyways, why don't you tell us about some terrible people, terrible lady killers, and um, yeah, let's go. Well, first I wanted to start with just a few facts about female serial killers, because I think it's just such a fascinating topic, because I know being a woman, I I couldn't imagine murdering for fun, or just... (laughs) murdering (laughs) under (laughs) i don't know i think it's i think it's a very fine line because we see women in our society as like nurturing and motherly and how they can just turn into this something that's completely opposite just fascinates society and it fascinates Mm me yeah um the most common murdering method for killing with women is poison i feel like i know Mm. that yes it's like a less it's clean yeah it's yeah. neat yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all there's the, nothing to clean up I, yeah. yeah you just have a body yeah yeah I mean, <laughs> and like before there was all that testing they it would be like oh well maybe they just died from like bad chicken or something we yeah they just don't had know. a heart attack or something yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. so it, true um approximately 15 percent of all serial killers are women and because women only commit 10% of all uh, non-serial killer murders, there are more female serial killers than you might expect. So when women commit murder, it's mostly like a crime of passion okay, or like a second degree murder opposed to first degree thought out in serial killers. So that means like women are more inept to become serial killers than men. Okay. Does that make hmm. sense? Mm-hmm. <laughs> And 15%, I thought that was kind of big. Yeah. Yeah. But, Uh, like, in general, they're, like, the people, like, women who, their crimes don't tend to be as, they're more like a one-time kill? Exactly. I mean, like, if, if we think of, like, a female killer, it's normally, like, her husband cheated on her and she went berserk. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. Like Chicago. the. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's all what Snapped is about, my yeah. favorite true crime show. <laughs> yeah. So, um, they usually kill people with whom they have a close relationship, mm-hmm. and they are less likely to have a prior criminal history than men. That makes sense, I guess, if it's like okay. a crime of passion or a, like a moment mm-hmm. where they just lose it. Yeah, but serial killers are very methodical, so I found that quite interesting, um, how they... Cause I think the whole point of being a serial killer is that you're trying not to get caught. And so one of the best ways to get caught is to kill someone you know. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Honestly. (laughs) Okay, yeah. Fair. Mm -hmm. (laughs) On average, they take way longer to get caught. A 2011 study found that because of their subtle techniques and the general lack of criminal history, women get away with their sprees for much longer than their male counterparts. On average, female serial killer careers span 8 to 11 years, whereas men's serial killer careers only last for an average of two years. All right. Hmm. It's kind of scary. I feel like that's on, uh, like, Criminal Minds. It was like, wait, we're looking for a woman suspect, you know, and it was Mm -hmm. always like a, whoa. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Uh, women are most oft or women serial killers are mo- are often motivated by material gain, and they are less likely to torture their victims. Okay, well, okay. there's that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, so our first case is over Eileen Warnos. Um, I've also heard her name pronounced Eileen, or just Lee Warnos, but I'm gonna go with Eileen because that's my aunt's name, and it's best for me to read it that way. (laughs) I'm not saying my aunt is a serial killer, though. (laughs) That we know of. Good to know. That we know of. Eight to ten years, Caitlin. (laughs) Eight to ten years, we'll find out the truth. (laughs) So Eileen Warnos, I think, is one of the most famous American serial killers, or just female serial killers in general, because there was a movie titled Monster, which Charlize Theron actually won an Oscar for. That's her. I didn't see the movie, but I know it. Yeah, I've never seen the That's movie. I wanted is. to watch okay. it last night, but you know, like, life mm. just gets in the way sometimes. Yeah. But yes. <laughs> we can watch it while crocheting. 
Hashtag crochet crimes. Okay. Crochet crimes. Exactly. (laughs) Continue. (laughs) So Eileen Carroll Lee Warnos was a female serial killer and sex worker who murdered seven men in Florida from 1989 to 1990, killing them at point blank range. And if you don't know what that means, that means like literally they were within two feet when she shot them. Warnos was born on February 29, 1956. Her parents divorced before she was born, and she never met her biological th- father because he was incarcerated. When Warnos was age four, her mother left Warnos to live with her grandparents, and then they ended up do- adopting Eileen. Eileen, by age 11, was heading down the wrong path. She she exchanged sex for drugs and food and would even have sex with her younger brother. Warnos later stated that her grandfather sexually abused her, but I don't know if there was, like, any concrete evidence into this. At 14, Warnos became pregnant and placed her son up for adoption. At 15, her grandfather kicked her out of the house, and Warnos became a full-time sex worker to make ends meet. So she just really did not have a good start in life, as you can tell. Mm, yeah. And I think that goes back to what we were talking in our previous episode. Um, uh, what is it called? Uh, nurture versus nature. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Very as an adult, Warnos was just involved in crime. She was arrested for DUI, disorderly conduct, armed robbery, car theft. Uh, resisting arrest and firing a gun at a moving car, which seems very intense to me. (laughs) Very movie (laughs) moment. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. She moved from Florida and married quickly, but divorced that husband when he hit her with his own cane. In 1996, Warrenos met Tyra Moore at a lesbian bar. They moved in together, and Warrenos made ends meet again with sex work. On November 30th, 1989, Warnos met Richard Car- Charles Mallory for an RDV, which I don't know what that means, but... <laughs> for an wrote. RDV. Yeah. Rendezvous? For rendezvous. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Googling, what does RDV stand for? I'm I was like, like <laughs> RDV, I, I know I wrote that familiar. for some reason. I feel like that comes up in like my, my French keyboard, like automatic... <laughs> Yes. Oh, exactly. see, yes, you should know. Yeah. There we go. So I guess <laughs> they had rendezvous. a rendezvous. Yes. Okay. Well, rendezvous. Yeah. So, <laughs> Char- Rachel Charles Mallory was one of her clients. Uh, Mallory was con- was a convicted rapist, and Eileen said she killed Mallory for self defense. Um, Mallory was shot twice in his left lung, and over the next twelve months. Warnos killed six more men, and she claimed that all of her victims either raped her or attempted to rape her while she was servicing them, and that her homicides were committed on that basis of self-defense. On January 9, 1991, Warnos was arrested while after she was on the run for six months due to a hit-and-run accident. Warnos' girlfriend, uh, Tyra Moore, was with her when Eileen was arrested, and she basically spilled the beans to the police officers in exchange for immunity. Three days later, Warnos confessed to the murders and claimed self-defense. In 1992, Warnos was tried for the murder of Mallory, just her first uh, murder, and she was sentenced to death. Warnos later pled no contest to three other murders and guilty for another. No charges were brought in the sixth murder because the body was never found. Warnos told several inconsistent stories about the killing. She claimed initially that it was seven men that raped her while she was working, but later recanted that claim for self-defense, citing robbery and a desire to leave no witness as a reason for uh, murdering. During an interview with the filmmaker, when she thought the cameras were off, she told him that it was in fact self-defense but she could not stand being on death row where she had been for 10 years at that point and just basically wanted to die. Warnos was assessed uh, using a psychopathy test, which she scored a 32 out of 40, and anything above a 25 is considered a psychopath. Warnos was killed by lethal injection on October 9th, 2002, and was the 10th woman in history in the United States to uh, be executed by lethal injection and the second in the state of Florida. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I don't really know a whole lot about her because 
I mean, I think it's very clear what happened. Yeah. Um, by my opinion, uh, mm-hmm. I think that psychopath test really put it in my mind like it wasn't self defense. It was um, another motive. Yeah. So, did like the crimes that she committed? Did they? know about them as they happened and she kept claiming self-defense or did it all kind of come to a head when the when the like girlfriend can or spilled beans i think it all kind of came to a head um okay uh yeah otherwise they wouldn't have arrested her much that's what i was wondering yeah if she kept getting out of it or not yeah (laughs) she was was (laughs) exactly exactly i believe she was arrested after they No, but uh, I was saying, I believe she was arrested after they found a car with a dead body in it, like on the side of the road in Florida, and they just kept finding these um, men who were shot at Point Blank Range. And I was actually watching a a video before of her, of an interview of her before we were recording, and she was like, the prosecutor said I was one of the worst killers he's ever seen. It's not like I cut off their penis or, like, uh, stabbed them or something. I just shot them. And I was like, if that what justifies it in your brain, like, there's some deep problems. Yeah. So I have a question and mm-hmm. I have an analysis. Tell us. Um, okay. The question, what did she do with the bodies after she killed them? Is it known? Did she just leave them? I think where, so. Where they were? Okay, because yes. she was probably in, like, like hotel rooms or wherever. Um, oh, yeah, and then one of them wasn't found, so implied. Yeah, I believe that she killed all of them. Like, all, she did her um, sex work out of cars. Okay. And um, then, according to her, something went wrong, and she just killed them. And I don't know if uh, her girlfriend would, like, come pick her up or something. I... I really should have done more research, but I do know she did not mutilate the bodies. Okay. And mm-hmm. uh, that was something that she used in her defense. That, like, I, <laughs> I'm not a serial I just, killer. I just killed them. I didn't... Yeah, I just killed them. I did, I, <laughs> no, but I could totally... It was totally, all from self-defense, seven times. I <laughs> could totally see somebody, like, even, like, justifying that to themselves, though. Yeah. As, like, mm-hmm. a, this isn't a problem. It was self-defense. Like, I, I just left them. Like, I could have done more, but I didn't, like... It totally was self-defense. Like I could. Well, if I don't it was know. self-defense, you would call the authorities. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what I think in her head. Th- so this is my analysis. Mm-hmm. They said you said um, maybe she was molested by her grandfather. Mm-hmm. We don't know. She could have been molested by like multiple people. Oh yeah. And I mean, I didn't see the movie. I don't know the story very well. Mm-hmm. This is like the first I've ever heard of her. Same. Yeah. But I would think that. When she was with these other men, it was probably, like, replaying. And yes, her killing them was, like, getting her revenge or, like, on the, the people that actually did hurt her. Yeah. Like, maybe That's- it was something, like, with... I mean, this is total speculation, but, like... Because uh-huh. it wasn't every single person. If she was a sex worker, it wasn't like she was killing every single person. Yeah. But, like, maybe there was something there, like, that reminded her. That set her off. Yeah, yeah. trigger or something. Mm-hmm. But I, I would counter-argue that with... She was a psychopath. So yeah. Yes, I, I too. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> There's that I, element. Yeah, I mean, I don't... I, I'm not a psychologist, but I know psychopaths don't have empathy. Yeah. And they don't mm-hmm. really have emotion. They're just playing a role in what people want them to do. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Very true. Well, um, as far as analysis goes... Uh, Eileen Ornos is a Pisces, mm-hmm. and she has a Libra moon. Tara. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it always go back to Libra and Sagittarius? <laughs> well, we're an iconic duo. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Pisces, mutable, uh, water, emotion. Um mm-hmm. And then moon and Libra, air, unfeeling. No, I'm just mm-hmm. kidding. Um, but social, um, let's see. What are your thoughts, Tara? Um, isn't it... Again, I, I, I talk on a Zodiac podcast and I don't even really know how this works. But isn't it when you don't know the correct time that someone is born, because we don't know what time she was born, that the moon can vary like six or seven degrees... From where it is isn't that a thing yeah 
Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, it can. So her moon, it's in Libra, but it's on it's the very edge close of to Libra. Scorpio. So it could be in Scorpio. This is true. Um, not to say that Scorpios are serial killers. I mean, the other serial killer had a Libra moon, like it's yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but as I far mean, as I have like, an Aries moon, so and oh, a yeah, lot of <laughs> serial killers have Aries moon. There we go. But I would justify that as I'm a cancer and not a lot of cancers are serial killers, but there still are some. <laughs> you got a lot of emotion there, Kaylin. So, uh, <laughs> yes. I'm a cancer. Okay. <laughs> That's what we're known for. I know. Um, but for her being a Pisces, Pisces are emotional mm-hmm. and Pisces are mm-hmm. like, I think we said like on our last episode about how, um, or one of our last episodes about how Pisces like feel everything, but like can kind of contain it. More so mm-hmm. than like with a Cancer and a Scorpio, the other water signs, you'll know when they're upset. Mm-hmm. Um, and a Pisces like feels it all equally to the other water signs, but can kind of contain it a little bit more. Um, mm-hmm. So maybe that kind of goes along with like growing up and maybe not lashing out when she was younger because she was able to contain it a little bit more. Um, but also Pisces tend to be their own worst enemies. Um, mm. And it doesn't like... You know, that doesn't mean like it's like a detrimental quality, but just as one of the qualities, like wanting one thing and wanting the exact opposite at the same time. Um, I believe like, my mom is a Pisces. Yeah. September 26th, is that Pisces? That's mm-hmm. Lib- a Libra. Libra. Never mm-hmm. mind. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get I into Libra. I know so much about astrology, <laughs> don't I? You know, just <laughs> as much as we know about murder. Um <laughs> But I mean, I guess I could say like, I don't know, the it is interesting what you said, though, about her her moon being like, it is possible that if she was born at a different time, it could be um, in Scorpio. But mm-hmm. I don't know, I'm kind of like, I don't know what like, I don't know how to explain her, you know, in, um mm-hmm. in like, I mean, thank God, there's not a lot of people like her. Yeah. Um, or if there are, they they haven't come to light yet, which could be a good thing or a bad thing. Her, um, yeah. Her Venus is in Aries, so like mm-hmm. that is like we've talked about before, a fiery and very like um, having, you know, the way that she would, even though we're talking about psychopathic tendencies too, but the way that mm-hmm. she would give and receive love would be in a Aries way, which is very headstrong. Um, very fiery very like it's a cardinal sign it's very um driven um and then her mars is right on the cusp it's like the last moment of capricorn i don't know if that would change based on her birth time in between that and sagittarius but it seems almost like capricorns like really are calculated like they Mm -hmm. they um they kind of take everything into consideration and are very, um, I don't know, I guess, like, they could be considered, like, to be methodical people. What do you think, Tara? Yeah. Like, I don't know, so having her Mars in Capricorn, Mm -hmm. um, like, I kind of can see that as almost, like, going back to, like, well, I didn't mutilate them, I was controlled about it, I just did the deed and I was done Mm -hmm. with it. Like, (laughs) we don't need emotion involved here, like, it wasn't messy, I didn't let my emotions get the best of me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like that kind of goes along with the Capricorn Mars to me um, mm-hmm. with the sex and aggression. Um, mm-hmm. And then I don't know. I guess those are really the elements of her chart that I would think would. The Capricorn Mars is kind of making sense to me as I'm thinking of it that way. I don't know. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me as well because it seems like she was able to, I mean, she was a psychopath, but just remove her from herself from what she did in interviews that I've seen of her and like she's like well yeah I killed him and then what like (laughs) (laughs) yeah like I don't know I'm just thinking about like some of the people we talked about in our last like collaboration episode Mm -hmm. where it was like their Mars is in Aries their Mars is in Scorpio and it was like they had intense crimes like Mm -hmm. you know not that these were it's almost like you know what she was saying like it's not like i went crazy about it like i didn't mutilate it and blah 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 yeah yeah. and it's like that doesn't stop the fact that you killed all these people but okay fair in comparison to the other crimes (laughs) we heard about you know it wasn't like a a bloodbath um yeah which seems like a lot more capricorn way to do it (laughs) more efficient yeah 
I mean, women are efficient, so I guess women mm-hmm. serial killers are efficient. Yeah, at least if their Mars is in Capricorn, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> is my Mars in Capricorn? <laughs> <laughs> I have to check. I don't know. <laughs> Do you think you'd be an efficient killer, Kayla? <laughs> um, I mean, emotionally, I don't think I could ever take a life unless, like, brought to a certain point where someone was like threatening me or my family yeah but Mm -hmm. um i don't know like i think serial killers and murders get caught because they're just stupid and they make (laughs) stupid mistakes so like (laughs) if you want to do it like be smart (laughs) (laughs) oh my god i was i have in like one of the capricorn moon groups like or i'm in another one now on facebook Mm -hmm. and um and like there someone asked something where they were like do you just get so annoyed and sometimes not even answer people when they're just so stupid <laughs> yeah, yeah that's how i am and i'm, yeah, I'm just like, like i remember honestly. as a kid being like that's a stupid question i'm not answering you <laughs> <laughs> so i kind of get like the come on like let's be smart about this anyway <laughs> I feel the exact same way. Yeah. And I don't know. I, maybe it's, like, the more educated I get and, like, the more I learn about, like, logic and, like, way of people thinking. I'm just – it just amazes me how people justify things and how they think they're just so right when they're just – I believe that it's just so wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I feel like – Maybe we can bring it all back to her Mars and Capricorn. I got to look more into Mars and Capricorn now. Mm-hmm. But um, for that kind of controlled and like, I don't know. Um, I, I mean, she was obviously uninvolved, un- unevolved, correct? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or like, well, you I know. I think she's just, she's just crazy. She's just like, yeah. She's just got, I don't even know if that's evolved versus unevolved because mm-hmm. it's like um, she she just had like i think it goes back to what you said with nature versus nurture yeah but also because i don't know if there's anything like some like in some of the other people's charts who were looking at it was like whoa but i feel like she has the combination of the you know how she grew up and Mm -hmm. how um she you know if she scored that on a psychopath test and has those tendencies i don't really think it matters where your 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 birth chart is i guess i guess it does to a point because you know, if you grew up in a really loving environment and have psychopathic tendencies, like the way you're going to handle things is going to be different than someone who grew up mm-hmm. like her, you know? Well, mm-hmm. uh, it makes me think of this one podcast I was listening to, The Happy Face Killer. They had a psychologist on there and he was actually studying psychopathy and he took the test himself and he realized he was a psychopath. Oh my God. And he was like, what is this? So, and he, <laughs> he never killed anyone. He just... I think he said it was most, like, shown in his relationships okay. and how he really just kind of just didn't care about his girlfriend's and children's emotions. Like, he cared for their well-being, but it was just different in that way. Yeah. So, and he didn't, like, care about dangerous situations. Like, if his kid broke his arm, he was like, well, that's what you get. So... <laughs> Like, I'm worrying about myself now. <laughs> no. But honestly, it was so interesting. Because <laughs> when you think of a psychopath, you think of like the people like Eileen Warnos. And I think there's much more psychopaths and sociopaths in the world than we think. Yeah. But then there, there's like, you know, like we said, multiple factors going into it. Like, is it your stars? <laughs> is it how you're born? Um, well, psychopath is you're born that way. Sociopath. Oh is no, I c- know. Yeah, you yeah, come I, that way from a trauma. For sure. No, I mean yeah. like uh, what else that's uh, influencing whether or not you then become a murderer because of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, do you think you're a psychopath, Sierra? <laughs> I don't. I don't. But I, I think it's almost like my. Uh, no, I get way too. I get way too emotional about things. But yes. I'm, I'm totally able to keep it under lock in stressful situations, and so yeah. I think that that's where I'm like, okay, it's broken. But, like, we can't change that. So what are we going to do about it to make sure that we're going to get it fixed kind of thing? Like, instead of being like, oh, my God, it's broken. You know, like, I think I go into, like, panic mode of Mm -hmm. let's take care of this. There's no, like, you cannot, you don't have the time to deal with your emotions right now. But then I feel it all after. So, no, I don't think. Yeah, I'm at the exact same way. When I think back, um, like, traumas in my life, like, I remember, like, going through it and not having any 
emotion and then right after just freaking out oh for sure that's exactly yeah. what happens to me too it's like whereas once like my it's sister safe. <laughs> yes my sister is the exact opposite so it's just it's interesting nature versus nurture and I, and like bringing that back to astrology too, I was reading things about Capricorn moons and it like almost like verbatim said that about how Mm -hmm. it was like, you can keep a cool head and you are the perfect person to go to in a crisis situation because you don't let emotion get to you and you can keep everything under control. And I was like, oh my God, I've been seen, you know? (laughs) Um, (laughs) But anyways, I know you have more people to tell us about. So why don't we? So the next two I... I'm really excited for because I've read books over these next two lady killers. So, okay. yeah, I know a lot more. So come at me with the questions because I probably can answer them correctly. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so second we have Nanny Doss. Nanny Doss is also known as the Giggling Nanny, the gi- the Giggling Granny, the Jolly Black Widow, and the Lonely Hearts Killer. Not <laughs> to be confused with the Lonely Hearts Killers. Oh. That's a whole nother case. Okay. But Nanny was born Nancy, but she um, just became known as Nanny very early in her life. Uh, she was born at the start of the 20th century in 1905 in Alabama to strict, strict parents. Her parents made her work on the farm and disallowed her to be with boys. When Nanny was seven years old, she was riding on a train when a sudden stop uh, hit and she fell and split open her head. This injury faced her for the rest of her life from enduring headaches to causing her to, quote, think crooked. And that's what a quote that Nanny said herself. Um, By the age of 15, she dropped out of school and married a man named Charlie Braggs, with whom they had five children together, but only two survived from infancy. And their names were Melvina and Florine. Nanny's husband would later go on to say that he had suspicion of the deaths of their other three children due to the baby's rapid decline. After eight years of marriage and a result of infidelity and, quote, bad motherhood, the two divorced and Nanny did not take custody of her two daughters. Okay, so after the failure of her first marriage, Nanny met and married a name named Robert Franklin Harrelson in 1929. Nanny stated that Robert was mean and an abusive drunkard, and 16 years into their marriage, when the Allied forces won World War II, Robert got particularly drunk and raped Nanny that night. And so after just putting up with him for 16 years, Nanny just had enough. And Robert liked drinking raw gut whiskey, which I had to look this up. It's like whiskey that you keep in corn. Okay. Um, I'm not a whiskey drinker, but that's what it said. It's like kept in corn in an old fruit jar and it makes the alcohol. And so one day she just put arsenic in that whiskey. And well, needless to say, the next time he went to that stash, um, he died. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So in 1943, Nanny's eldest daughter, Melvina, gave birth to a baby boy. And while um, Nanny visited Melvina in the hospital, she saw her mother stick a hat pin into the baby's he- uh, head. When Nanny told her daughter that the baby boy died, Melvina noticed her mother was holding the hat pin. Yeah. A couple of years later, in 1945, Nanny was put in charge of Melvina's second-born son, Robert. And after Nanny and Melvina had a fight, Nanny died mysteriously, mysteriously, quote, 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 under Nanny's care. The death was diagnosed as asphyxia from unknown causes, which I don't get that. (laughs) And two months later, Nanny collected $500 life insurance that she had taken out on Robert, which was, um, uh, in 1945, that was probably, I would say, like $2,000 today. Okay. I could be totally wrong on that, but anyway. Nanny met her third husband, so we're now number three, Arlie Lanning, but I've also seen in other places named Harley Lanning, through a Lonely Hearts column and married three days after meeting. Arlie was a ladies' man who was known to attract women's attention, which Nanny just hated. And one night in 1952, Arlie hosted a large party in their home in which Nanny was so mad that she poisoned him with arsenic, and he only died like a few days later. When he died, um, it was said to be of heart failure, and people just didn't question it. Soon after, the couple's house had been left to Arlie's sister. Well, that house was burned down, and the insurance money went to Nanny, 
who she quickly banked it. And um, then uh, Arlie's mother died in her sleep. Quote. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Nanny left North Carolina and ended up at her sister Dovey's house. Um, and Dovey was bedridden as soon as Nanny's arrival, and then she died. Uh, Nanny then decided to find her next husband via the Diamond Dating Club membership, which is basically like a top tier of Lonely Hearts Club. And, the, and through this club, she met Richard Morton. They married, but Richard Morton was not faithful to Nanny, which she didn't like. And before uh, then, before long, she brought out the arsenic for husband number four, and then she poisoned her mother, Louisa, in January 1953, when her mother came to live with her. Then Morton died three months later in May 19, in 1953, but Nanny just wasn't done yet. Then Nanny married a man named Samuel Doss, who was a preacher, but he read like these um, romance novels, which... I guess we're pretty racy for the time and nanny did not like that so um i guess she poisoned him and in 1953 uh samuel was admitted to the hospital with flu-like symptoms in which the hospital diagnosed him with a digestive tract infection and then he was released and then like just a week later he came back and uh nanny killed him that evening in a rush to collect two life insurance policies that she had taken out on him and now this sudden death alerted the doctors who ordered an autopsy. And the autopsy revealed a huge amount of arsenic in the system. And it was enough to kill 18 people. Oh, Jeez. Okay. So Nanny was finally arrested. Um, when questioned <laughs> by police, they saw a bunch of mysterious deaths surrounding Nanny. And now Nanny was charming. She was breezy, funny, who liked to make like... Um, sexual jokes and she just came off as a lovely grandma type like if you see photos of her she looks like the grandma next door honestly she does, yeah yeah but nanny finally admitted to all of her murders via arsenic on her four husbands her mother her sister two of her grandsons and her mother-in-law the press had a field day with this one and the headlines were reading how she charmed them and then she poisoned them Nanny liked all the press she was getting and appeared in TV interviews after interview. And she asked one reporter if she could move her glass. Or well, when one reporter asked her if she could remove her glasses, she said, no, I don't want to because I might get another husband if I look nice. So she was already thinking about husband number six or seven. Um, though there was evidence and excavations of the other victims of nannies the prosecutor who later became the governor of oklahoma only decided to charge her with the murder of samuel Dodds because they because they just had concrete evidence on that uh, nanny's motives for the 11 murders was life um was life insurance money and the search for quote the real romance of her life Nanny pled guilty on May 17, 1955, and she was sentenced to life imprisonment because the state did not want to pursue the death penalty due to her, her being a female. Doss was never charged with the other 10 deaths, and uh, she died of leukemia after just 10 years in prison. Damn. So Nanny just, is the, if you just slightly inconvenienced her, the arsenic came out. Damn. <laughs> So, yeah, Nanny Doss liked to kill people. That is wild. Like, yeah. I I never heard about her. I'm Mm-mm, Me either. I'm very fascinated and disgusted. And, like, I just also think it's, like, I don't know, maybe it's because it's, like, earlier times. Mm-hmm. How you could just casually poison people and move on. And there wasn't, like, it's almost like how you could just change your name. Like, what's the H.H. Yeah. Holmes, you know, like the the original serial killer in the U.S., whatever, um, uh-huh. like from the Chicago World's Fair. And how he just kept changing his name. Yeah. And how, like, he was, like, married a million times and just kept killing all these people. And it's, I like, I mean, well, I believe my great-grandfather just went across the border from New York to New Jersey and just got married. And, like, that wasn't a red flag for them. Like, because they didn't just see each other's records back then yeah like nothing was like i don't know universal Hmm. nothing was like kept up with and like to go search just wasn't a thing yeah yeah so she could just be like well i'm gonna poison you and i'm gonna move on and find Mm -hmm. another husband you've inconvenienced me here's some arsenic (laughs) like 
<laughs> that I, I cannot with the hat pin thing. I cannot. Oh, yeah. Well, the fact I think that makes this so interesting is because, like, we've all heard of the Black Widow, but she was the Black Grandmother. Yeah. Like, she killed mm-hmm. her grandkids. Like, Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Exactly. Yeah. And, ugh. I had two things I want to say before I forget, bringing it Zodiac-wise, is that you said that she would make, like, uh, she was, like, funny and, like, make sexual jokes with Mm -hmm. people. She's a Scorpio. And uh, Dirty Jokes is classic Scorpio. So just wanted to put that out there. Um, And also (laughs) the whole, like, how she really liked being, or, like, she she took to being in the spotlight. We haven't Mm -hmm. really talked about this on our podcast yet but there's something called your north node which is like what your like uh kind of goal is what your path is for this lifetime and hers is in leo and so like to make a Mm -hmm. name for yourself and to be well known and to be in the spotlight is what the life path of a leo would be so it's almost Mm -hmm. like she got a taste of it at the end and was like oh well i'll tell you everything yeah um yeah (laughs) (laughs) so that's wild um and it's a crazy story. I remember I read this in a book called Lady Killers. And, like, I think I was reading it on the train here in Paris. And my mouth, like, just was like, oh, my God. Yeah. And this guy just kept staring at me. And I was like, if you only knew what I was reading right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, just, like, since we were talking last time, or last, <laughs> last lady killer, um, her, <laughs> her Mars is also in Capricorn. Interesting. And, yes, I just noticed that. Yeah, and I'm thinking how it seems like it's different, how we saw in the last one, but, but similar mm-hmm. in a way where it's, like, it's not gruesome. It's, let's make this mm-hmm. as, I know we said that that could be, like, just, like, a lady killer thing in general. Yeah. But, um, but also, like... Let's leave no cleanup. Let's make this quick and dirty. Moving on. I don't want this to, you know, like, I don't know. It just seems very, um, how do I, like, Capricorns are the type of, like, how do I get the most for my money type mm-hmm. of thing. And it's almost mm-hmm. like, and, and plus she's taking out all life insurance, which, I mean, is she, not. I think she took out life insurance on all of her victims. I just didn't have time to go into all of that. But, um, wow. But that's I mean, also like that's her not grandson was like a day old, and she already had life insurance policies out oh on him. God. Wow. Like, um, yeah, that's a bit of a red flag. <laughs> yeah, but also like, I mean, I'm not saying this has to be a Capricorn thing, but mm-hmm. finding a way to financially succeed is the most known as being a Capricorn thing. So, um, I don't know, like that that just Capricorn Mars and going back on that i'm gonna do some research on capricorn mars after this um yeah that sounds interesting she, she also doesn't have i mean aside from the north node which i don't know if you'd count that she doesn't have any fire in her chart yeah no you normally don't like that's not like a huge personality trait um mm-hmm. the north node so yeah she doesn't really yeah she doesn't have any fire you don't yeah, have any fire in your chart tara i know <laughs> <laughs> We gotta watch out for this one. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, she's like mostly air and like mm-hmm. water and a little bit of earth. But yeah, no fire. That's very interesting because mm-hmm. she. Yeah. So her, she's a Scorpio with a, a an Aquarius moon. Um, mm-hmm. Aquarius moon. So that's a double fixed sign too. So like. Um, that's another thing I was thinking about how like when we talked about the um the East Area Rapist the Golden State Killer uh-huh. um how he was a Scorpio and how like he evaded being caught for so long and how all like the famous serial killers like kind of like get the reputation yeah. of being the mutable signs and the ones that go for a long time without being caught like him are like, probably more fixed yeah, yeah it was a fixed sign like very I don't know like uh this I, I don't I don't know exactly what it is about the fix that that would make it i guess they're just not as all over the place as us mutables are um (laughs) well i mean just comparing you and me i'm a fixed sign and you're a mutable i feel like i'm just well you're a cardinal sign oh what what is cardinal i don't know cardinal is the first sign of the season so much more like a go-getter ambitious um let's start something new yeah Um, that's me yeah 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 yeah. (laughs) and then mutable is much more like i could do this or i could do that or yeah which is definitely you yeah yeah um so and your moon is 
in Aries. So Aries. You're, so you're, that's also a cardinal sign. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so you've got a lot of that, like, let's get started, let's begin things type of type of energy. Um, but, yeah, but the fixed sign situation with the being able to evade... I don't know. It's almost like, it's almost like they have like, there's, I feel like there might be even like an element of confidence there because like, this is what it is. I know this is what it is. Therefore, this is what it is. Like fixed element. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I mean, the fact she was able to kill, I think four or five husbands without getting caught. Like, I mean, Mm -hmm. she did move around a bit, but I don't know. Like when someone says I'm on my third husband, like even today that would raise some eyebrows. Yeah. (laughs) And then it's like, well, are are they still alive? Oh no, they're all dead except my first husband. Like what? Yeah. And I mean, this is in the mid century. So. Yeah. It's like when you meet these new guys, do you have any previous relationships? Oh yes. (laughs) They're all gone. (laughs) Be nice to me. Like, yeah. Oh my God. (laughs) That's why I don't know. Do you see anything else astrologically, Tara, in her chart? Uh, Where's her Venus? So. Her Venus is in Libra. Libra, yeah. Hmm. It's, you know, it's it's hard with serial killers. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because they're not right in the head. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. I feel like the stars, they're, 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 they're mentality overpowers what the stars would do to their personality oh for Mm -hmm. sure but i think it like can also like give us a uh, not like so much as a why but like a um you know giving like a comparing how some people are more gruesome some people are more Mm. calculated some people are more like secretive some people have those big personalities you know like Mm -hmm. we don't know what her rising sign was because we don't have like the exact uh details but um um but scorpios are intense people um Mm -hmm. but like like we learned from our scorpio episode they can be super like loving as well um Mm -hmm. but i don't know so i could see how she would come across as this like super loving uh you know just like sweet old granny and um and aquarius moons are like they see everything from a different point of view and they have like um they have a whole element of weirdness to them but um uh i I don't think she saw things from a different point of view i think she was only focused on herself so I don't know if I would necessarily agree with that, but she definitely was odd. Not like not like seeing like not that you can't be focused on yourself, but I mean like um, like an Aquarius isn't going to look at like the in the same way that everybody else is going to look at it. Like I, I feel like I gave this oh, example okay. before, but it's like if you're in an art gallery and everybody's looking head on at the picture, the Aquarius is going to be the one that's at the side looking at it from a side angle. Like, oh look, look, it looks oh, kind of okay. like a, a weird like pathway if you look at it from this kind of thing. And it's like, why are you standing next to the painting instead of looking at the painting? <laughs> you know. But it's like, but you're right, and that is cool. Um, uh-huh. So that's kind of like that's almost like at the at heart because that's her moon like i, I mean, don't know that could it be seen in like how she used the lonely hearts club and the diamond dating club like yeah, that's like not having, how you fi- find a husband back um then for sure yeah okay so like having like mm-hmm. an unconventional is the word i'm looking for too like yes having an unconventional like core to her like being mm-hmm. with an aquarius moon so well um she's like i'm fascinated and terrified as usual <laughs> Well, she's dead, so you have at least that to know. At least there's that. That's the, there's I think, some leukemia too. Like, yeah. I mean, I think God was just angry at her and was like, "Okay, we're done here. We are done. Here. <laughs> <laughs> have um, fun in hell." Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, now we're coming to my favorite. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> Dorothea Puente. Now, I first heard about this case um, from there's a show that was on Quibi. Uh, called Murder House, where they did, like, renovations of, uh, like, former homes that a murder happened in. Oh, and now, ooh. if you know me, I love interior design, oh, and yeah. I love true crime. <laughs> so this was an incredible show. Um, I mean, That's Quibi a very is, cool idea that's for a, a show. That's a very yes. cool idea. It what was. was it called? Murder House? Yeah, but now Quibi no longer exists because... Ugh. Oh. That Quibi had some problems. <laughs> well, we got to find really that somewhere because that's very Sierra and Tara friendly as well. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
But uh, it was so interesting. And, like, the people who lived in the house currently were very eccentric. And they were like, blame her, not the house. And um, this whole uh, story happened in Sacramento, uh, California. So I would encourage you to look up uh, Dorothea Puente House because even that's just hella interesting. So. Okay. Okay. Dorothea Puente, also known as the Death House Landlady, was born January 9th, 1929 in San Bernardino County, California, to two alcoholic parents. Her father was a cotton picker and her mom was a sex worker, and they both abused her. To add more to the childhood trauma, her father attempted suicide right in front of her when she was only like three years old. Before Dorothea was even 10, both of her parents had passed away and she was sent to an orphanage where she was sexually abused. In later life, she lied about her childhood, saying that she was one of 18 children who were all born and raised in Mexico. In 1946, at the age of 16, Dorothea married a World War II soldier in which they had two daughters together. Now, some sources say that her husband died of a heart attack or in other sources say that he left her, but in 1948, uh, anyway, both of her children, two children, were sent to live with, like, relatives and um, were eventually adopted out, and she got divorced or her husband died or something happened. Um, old sources aren't necessarily the most accurate. Yeah. Um, after this, Dorothea was sent to jail for a year for signing forged checks and soon got pregnant with another baby from a man she barely knew, and she uh, placed that baby for adoption. In 1952, she married a Swede man named Axel Johansson, and they had a violent, tumultuous 14-year marriage. In 1960, Dorothea was arrested for owning and managing a brothel and was sentenced to 90 days in the Sacramento County Jail. And I guess her life was just not too hot at this point. Like, she wasn't doing well because she was arrested again for vagrancy which is um, homelessness. Okay. Uh, following that, she started to get involved in miscellaneous illegal ads, which over time just became more and more serious. This activity slowed down a great deal when she found work as a nurse's aide, of all things, and was caring for disabled, um, mentally disabled and physically disabled people and elderly people in private homes. In a short time, she started to manage a boarding house, in 1966, she divorced her uh, second husband and married a man who was 19 years her junior, and, but this marriage only lasted two years due to his unfaithfulness. Then he married for a fourth time, but this marriage only lasted for a few months. Shortly before the end of this marriage, um, Dorothea Punte took over a three-story, 16-bedroom care home at 2100 F Street in Sacramento, California, where she provided care and comfort to homeless and the destitute of the area. Now, the first sign of something wrong at her boarding house was when her neighbors noticed odd activities of a homeless alcoholic man known only as Chief who Dorothea stated that she, quote, adopted and made her handyman. Dorothea and Chief, uh, Dorothea had Chief dig in the basement and a cart, and he would, like, cart the soil and trash away in a wheelbarrow. Now, the basement floor was covered with a concrete slab, and then Chief later took down the garage in the backyard and installed some a fresh concrete slab there as well. Now, soon afterward, uh, Chief just disappeared. Uh, Dorothea started to spend time in the local bars looking for older men who were receiving uh, benefits like governmental benefits. And then she would forge their signatures to steal their uh, governmental benefits. And she was eventually caught on this and charged with 34 counts of treasury fraud. And while she was on probation, she continued to commit the same fraud with the people who were living in her home or in her boarding house. So like uh, a homeless man would come who was uh, mentally disabled and when they would establish his residence at the boarding house, she would take the governmental benefits and keep them for herself. Um, according to the California Court of Appeal records, in 1981, Punte began renting the upstairs apartment at her, uh, at her boarding house. 
Um, in April 1982, a 61-year-old woman named Ruth Monroe began living with Punte in her upstairs apartment, but then soon died from a, quote, overdose of codeine and Tylenol. Uh, Dorothea told police that the woman was very depressed because her husband was terminally ill. Uh, they believed her and judged her the incident as just like a suicide. Now, only a few weeks later, <coughs> the police were back at... Um, Dorothea's house for a 74 year old pensioner named Malcolm McKenzie and uh, Malcolm McKenzie accused Dorothea of drugging him and then Dorothea robbed him so she convinced so she, Dorothea was convicted of these three charges of theft in, on August 18th 1982 and served five years in jail but she only ended up serving three is that a alarm that is the firehouse oh. in my town that goes off <laughs> occasionally. <laughs> that was like, it stop. sounded like a hurricane alarm to me. <laughs> well, yeah, that's <laughs> anytime I'm on conference calls for work, they're like, are they uh, having a fallout by you, Tara? You okay? <laughs> <laughs> you okay? Yeah, you know? it's, it's the firehouse. It, do, it does it every day. Okay. I don't even hear it anymore <laughs> unless I'm on the phone with people. I just wanted to make God. sure you like weren't dying or something. <laughs> oh, but... no, I'm good. <laughs> we're okay. <laughs> Okay. Speaking of dying. Sorry. <laughs> okay. That was tasteless. Where, okay, moving on. Mm. Where was I? Um, okay, so McKenzie accused Dorothea of drugging him and then robbing him, which she was convicted on three charges of theft in 1982 and sentenced to serve five years in jail. While she was in prison, she had a pen pal named Everson, and uh, she was only released three years later from this drugging and robbing incident. And then Everson picked her up from prison in a red pickup truck, and they married the same day. And then he opened a joint bank account, and then they lived in their boarding house together. In November 1985, Puente hired a man named Ishmael Flores to uh, install some wood paneling in her apartment. For his labor, he was given an additional 800 bucks and a red pickup truck, which was in great huh. condition interesting eh connecting the dots here (laughs) so she stated that the pickup truck belonged to some boyfriend who didn't need it anymore now uh before uh ishmael left dorothea had asked him to do one more thing to build a box which was six feet by three feet by two feet to store quote books and other items and so when he was done he was asked to transport the box uh, to a storage depot but then Dorothea decided to like wait let's just put it in a riverbank um and uh it's just a dumping site so let's just put it over here well on January 1st 1986 a fisherman spotted the box um and guess what they found in there a no decomposed idea. yes I know <laughs> a decomposed and unidentified body of a elderly man um which turned out to be Dorothea's fifth husband so, uh, <laughs> when the police were investigating this murder, Dorothea continued to collect Everson's pension checks. She also maintained her room and board business, taking in 40 new tenants. Although she was making a great profit doing this, she wanted more. She was greedy, and therefore she started to cruise bars, like looking for new customers for her boarding home. Every month, uh, Dorothea collected all the tenants' mail before she saw it, and then she would give them only, like, a small amount of the money. And she would say the other was for rent. And so the tenants just had very little money, which they would spend at the bar. On November 11th, 1988, police inquired of the disappearance of a tenant who was a devental a developmentally disabled man with schizophrenia and a social worker had reported him missing. So they went to the house and they noticed that there was a disturbance in the dirt and well, seven bodies were found in her front and backyard. Uh, Dorothea was charged with the total of nine murders. She was convicted of three and is serving two life sentences. In 1998, Dorothea started uh, corresponding with a journalist, and she was sending him, like, various recipes, and there's a 2004 book named Cooking with a Serial Killer. (laughs) 
It included a <laughs> lengthy interview and almost 50 recipes with various prison art from Dorothea. Uh, Dorothea died March 27th, 2011 in a prison in California at the age of 82 from natural causes. Wow. Yeah, huh. so she just... Wow. <laughs> I don't know why I know about her, uh-huh. but, like, I don't know if it's, like, a Criminal Minds based an episode. I don't know if it's because I listened to this on a podcast or saw... Mm-hmm. I feel like I saw something on it, but, like, some things were familiar, and, like, it just, like, uh, uh, let's casually just build me a, a box six feet mm-hmm. by three feet by two <laughs> feet. You know, let's go to a storage chest. You know what? It's fine. I don't need these books. Dump it in the river. Like, yeah. Oh my god, that's ah. Uh. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, what? and like you look at pictures of these houses at this house. Like y'all should put it on your Instagram or something. It doesn't seem like there was enough room for forty tenants. Okay, but no. she. It's such a cute house, though. Yeah, she had like people <laughs> like living in the shed in the backyard, like. And these people were either homeless or severely disabled. And, like, social workers thought of her as just, like, a nice lady. So they would send their, like, uh, clients, yeah, their cases to uh, Dorothea's home. And they didn't realize that Dorothea was, like, literally abusing these people, not only financially, but they were made to work. They were made to, like, scrub the floors and, like, sleep in these small rooms or sleep, like, ten people to a room. Mm. damn um i mean she's just cold-hearted not to be on a hating on capricorns moment because i myself do really love capricorns and we're coming up on capricorn season but she's a capricorn sun capricorn moon and again trying to get your money's worth it was a business for it her. was a business was, yeah and like yeah. everything that you're saying like i didn't look at her chart until like kind of like part of the way through with mm-hmm. what you were saying but like it makes so much sense that because I was thinking as you were telling us this I'm like why doesn't she just get a job like it just seems like which is so rude of me but like I just <laughs> feel like you know there's so many things that she could have just like but honestly like even if she just ran the boarding home like as a regular boarding home uh, legally like she would have been <laughs> doing great yeah yeah it's it's just like i mean she had the the business experience from running a brothel like she mm-hmm. she was successful just like do it the right way yeah it's very very interesting but yeah capricorn sun capricorn moon needing that um like wealth and um mm-hmm. and also like the getting your money's worth like if i can i already have 40 people i'm doing well but like i can just like i see like my dad's capricorn business brand like i'm doing really well but (laughs) we i know we got 40 people going but you know that shed in the back we could potentially get 80 going and if we had 80 going then like i can just see the capricorn is like like brain turning of like you know it's good but we can make it better and i can get more money and it's also like what is she doing with this money it's just the fact of like getting it well, that was the mm. thing is, like, I don't understand how she got enough money to buy the house in the first place. Like, I was trying to look this up, and I'm pretty sure she did it illegally through, like, sex work or um, a stolen check or something like that. But, like, once she got this house and started running a business that could have been successful, nothing was ever enough for her. Damn. It was just greed, greed, greed. And going back to the comment I made about North Node before, her North Node is in Taurus, which is the fine comforts in life. So, (laughs) I mean, anyways. um, Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I'm very, like, it's another one. I just went through so many husbands, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. This episode has creeped me out a bit more than the first one. (laughs) (laughs) Because I feel like I could fall into one of these women's traps yeah that's mm-hmm. true it's, it's like it's not as gruesome but it's it's almost like much more like you feel like it's more likely that it could happen yeah exactly like ugh. i don't know you just i think especially the last two like they're just grannies to like yeah. mm-hmm. if i saw them at walmart or like target or something i wouldn't have a second thought in my mind yeah that's like probably like monster. the social workers like this is amazing that this like that this woman is doing this and that you know uh-huh. we can like you know send our our clients there and little did they know she's murdering them yeah wow. 
Well, we have Capricorn Sun, Capricorn Moon. For once, it's me who relates more to this. She has her Mars in Gemini. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but I'm trying to think, like, Mars in Gemini means you have, like, I don't know. I was going to say, like, I don't feel like there was any aggression here, though. You know, like, mm-hmm. there's... I don't know if we, I necessarily know how she, like... No, she actually, I believe, like, uh, mutilated the bodies. Now that I think of it, like, she would cut them up in her bathroom downstairs. Oh. So I believe Ugh. there was some aggression in how they died. Okay. Um... Because yeah. I was going to say, like, Gemini, um, Mars, is when you have, like, the two different sides. Like, it's when, mm-hmm. like, you handle it in this way, and then also in that way. So, yeah. maybe, I don't know. Um, I'm just thinking about, like, myself when I'm angry or needing to be aggressive. Like, like I've said, I have the two different sides to me where I can be super, like, you know, logical and, like, even headed and and what's it called even tempered um Mm -hmm. and then i have like the completely like explosive like it i don't get there often but like it exists you know um so maybe that was like i don't know like having that side of her in the gemini but um but also she went through a lot growing up as well so yeah yeah i don't know i mean all these women had terrible childhoods um Mm -hmm. I mean, Nanny Doss, I think, came from, like, more of a structured house. But, like, we all know if you put kids on a tight leash, they're going to rebel. Yeah. And that's, I mean, the first chance that a guy looked at Nanny, she was like, well, I'm off. So, yeah. Yeah. Trying to look at what else we got going on here. Do you see anything else, Tara, in her? I'm looking. Um... No, I mean, I really just, I like to look at the sun, the moon, Mars, and Venus. Same. But, Mm -hmm. um... I mean, I guess it's kind of strange that her Venus is in Pisces. Yeah, I was just looking at that. <laughs> but, um... Venus is love, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what does her Venus in Pisces mean? Pisces is very, like, artsy, um, very uh, creative, very, like, um, almost like they're, they're living... like the dreamy sign. Yeah, they're the dreamy hmm. sign. They're almost, like, living in a different reality sometimes and so that would be like love i don't know (laughs) in a way she was living in a different reality when it came to all of the you know like writing also like writing uh, from prison yeah her marriage like her marriages were just not what i would say normal they were either men who were way younger than her which i'm not saying that's a bad thing at all but it's just different and especially Mm -hmm. like um writing to a man while you're in prison and then marrying him the next day like yes (laughs) or the day of actually yeah sorry excuse me i got that wrong the day of like (laughs) yeah there's a little bit of like disconnect with reality there for sure exactly yeah i mean i watch Mm -hmm. love after lockup so i feel like i do know a lot about prison romance (laughs) oh my god and that's not necessarily not normal in that okay environment but still like it's not What's it normal. called? Love after lockup. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's how I get through all of my true crime. Is like I'll listen and study true crime, and then I watch terrible television, <laughs> and it just makes me happy. <laughs> well, actually, speaking of that, I looked up the show. The um, what is it called? Murder House Flip is what it's uh-huh. called. Yes. It's so Quibi is like still a website where you can watch stuff. Oh, awesome! You should definitely yeah. watch it because like the it's episodes on are only like five minutes each, which kind mm-hmm. of annoyed me, but it means you yeah. can get through them really quickly. I saw it was like episode one, two, and three are all mm-hmm. the Dorothea Puente houses yes. house, and then yeah, it's it says an unconventional home renovation show that takes on the country's most infamous homes one one's known for the mysterious murders within their walls so intriguing i know well they were like trying to build a swing swing set in the front and they were like oh you may find some like bones that we miss Uh, oh oh oh. (laughs) like oh okay Uh, i'll make sure to keep that in mind and then the the warning And then, like, another one, they were like, oh, the knife may be in the fireplace. (laughs) And (laughs) it's just like, I don't know if I want to think about that, like, when I'm in a house. Mm -hmm. Like, it intrigues me, but at the same time, 
Yikes. Some people just aren't bothered by it. I know. Like, I was going to say. House? I can live here. Do you think you could, Kaylin? Like, do you think you could live um, in a murder house? I would have, like, my pastor come and bless it. But I think I could because, like, also, um, like, something bad happened there. So I don't know if something bad, like, what are the chances of something terrible happening there again, you know? Mm. So maybe that could be a comfort to me. And I would try to, like, honor the victim in the best way I would know how. Like, maybe, like, a little garden outside or something. I don't think it would bug me. But at the same time, like, I think every time I would walk by the space that it happened, it would. Mm -hmm. I mean, how can that not bring emotion out of you? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, knowing this was someone's last view, this is where someone was pleading with their killer. Like, (sighs) my God. No. No. No, I couldn't. (laughs) No, Not I couldn't. me either. No, I couldn't. Well, do. I know the the girl who starred as uh, Juliet in the first in like the nineteen sixty eight Romeo and Juliet movie. She moved mm-hmm. into Sharon Tate's house uh, after the whole. And I she just said, got chills. I literally just she, got chills. She said it was a comfort to her. Um, like it never bothered her because she wanted to make like Sharon Tate's legacy more. Um, like, she wanted to fill Sharon Tate's dreams, and it, I guess it gave her a connection to her. But, like, oh, my God. I feel that like if that's, if that's what, like, if there are people like that, or, like, how mm-hmm. you said how you could and you would, like, commemorate, you know, the victim, then I think that that's good because there are people like me and Tara who are very, like, this shit is haunted AF that <laughs> would be, like... <laughs> Um, there's no way, you know? So I think that the, that's the type of person who would need to be in that space. Like, not someone who's like, I don't believe in any of this. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, or I don't know. Um, well, I don't know if I believe in ghosts, but, like, I do believe that someone's soul is still around once they die. Mm-hmm. So yeah. maybe that is a ghost. I don't know. Maybe I just, like, jinxed myself. But if... um. <laughs> I don't know, but, like, if that's someone's last place and it, if they want to hang around there and feel like they have unfinished business, I would try to help that in the best way I could. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get that. I just don't want to be where the murder yeah. happened. Well, then I just guess. put a pretty plant there, Tara. <laughs> just okay. put a pretty plant there. <laughs> All right. From that death works. comes life, right? <laughs> you know, yes. It's funny. Actually, Um, we have... Well, I won't say who, but I know somebody who lives next door to where a gruesome murder took place. Yes, and I know who you're talking I, about. Yes, and I, I pass it, like, when I go to visit, mm-hmm. because it's, like, in the same, I guess, development or whatever. Yeah. And it's just, I mean, I don't get, like, bad vibes, but it's like, ugh. That's, that's because. Where, that's where that person got murdered really yeah. brutally and horribly. I mean, it's, it's too much for me to think about like that. Yeah. I don't know, but they, but like that couple who lives in Dorothea Punte's house, they say, "Don't blame the house, blame the person." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, which I what, I understand that. And I also like love old houses. I'm making myself sound so weird. Well, you're talking to the right people. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, I'm in my place. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know. In any event, we can't say that the stars made any of these wacky people do anything but maybe it helps understand the way they did maybe we can say Mm -hmm. that i don't know the manner in which they did it there we go (laughs) let's change the title the manner in which the stars made me murder Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) i love it